Okay, welcome. I'm just waiting for people to come in from the previous session. Jade, can you please let me know if I did the right thing? I said yes, call everyone from the previous session. Jade, can you text and let me know? So we have people from Burlingame, Las Vegas, Sacramento, Hawaii. Uh, keep, keep telling us where you're from. And we're going to give everyone a couple of minutes because the previous session just ended. And yes, I can see uh, I can see the numbers rising. So, Miral, is it okay if we give everyone a few? Sure, sure. Okay, okay. and um, yep, she thinks I did the right thing. <laughs> so much for technology. <laughs> so, Allison, where are you from? Can you tell us? Oh, Allison said she's from Las Vegas. And I just asked Meryl if uh, LA is where, um, you know, she started all her schooling and everything. And she said, New York, very emphatic, mm -hmm. New York. Uh, <laughs> that's perfect. We love New York. So I think we are going to get going. Um, welcome, everyone, uh, to day two. And uh, we have Meryl caught up with us. I know, yes, someone's just coming in from San Carlos. Um, you, if you're new to Kids and Art, um, I am the founder of Kids and Art. I founded it in 2008. Uh, my name is Purvi Shah. Uh, my son, Ame, was diagnosed with cancer when he was just three years old. And I was a graphic designer and all I knew was to do art. So I used that just as self-distraction and I had no idea it would become a nonprofit. And that now we've worked with more than 2000, maybe more families. We used to have uh, weekly workshops at UCSF uh, Benioff Children's Hospital as well as Stanford Children's Hospital. And we did workshops with uh, bereaved families, uh, critical care patients, as well as young adults. This was all before COVID, of course. And uh, in March of this year, all human to human interaction ended in the hospital because our kids are immunocompromised. So our motto and our mission is to be there for our families and our patients wherever they are, and you know, just give them whatever they need whenever. So we moved all our workshops on Zoom and we started creating art lessons on YouTube so that our hospital partners could take those lessons and put them on their hospital monitors for patients who are inpatient. So that's how we've been uh, adapting our work. Um, there's a lot more. If you want to know, please do reach out to any one of us uh, from Kids and Art and I will be happy to share. Uh, I just cannot wait to introduce our next uh, Miral, who's already there. Uh, Miral is a prolific entrepreneur in the fields of technology development and the performing arts. In 2009, she combined her passion for dance and technology to create Illuminate, the world's first light dance technology company. Recruited to perform and were ultimately finalists, on the hit television show, America's Got Talent. That's pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, Illuminate ignited an electrifying phenomenon and was dubbed the best new act in America. As a software designer, Miral has programmed Illuminate's patented technology for major entertainment acts, including Grammy award-winning superstars Chris Brown, Christina Aguilera, the Black Eyed Peas, and Death Cab for Cutie, among others. Meryl is passionate about empowering young people to pursue opportunities in STEM and STEAM. And engaging and influential public speaker, she knows how to enlighten audiences audience, uh, about the creative side of technology. Meryl has an empowering journey to share, and I will let her take it from here. It is my privilege to bring you on. Thank you, Meryl. Thank you for having me. This is uh, an honor and I've been tuning in and I love what your your organization stands for. Kids and Art Foundation is, is a fantastic organization with such a, a 
good good cause and a good um it's just it's really an honor to be speaking today um thank you so yeah thank you thank you <laughs> so i think um I think I'm going to have Jade play a video so that everyone kind of knows more about my background and how I brought um, art and technology together and about my recent history with, with sickness and illness and how art basically saved my life. So um, you can, um, if you can play the video. <laughs> I will do that. Thank you. There's a slight delay, so give it a second. Sure. It's funny because you don't even realize your dreams until they come true. And that's kind of how Illuminate came to be. I've been writing software since I was nine years old and dancing most of my life. But I always kept those worlds separate until a friend of mine challenged me to bring them together. I knew there was a way to combine wireless technology to dance. I had this idea that it could open up a whole new world of performance art. So I stopped writing freelance apps and I put everything and anything I had into Illuminate. Financially, emotionally, it was my whole world. And it paid off. In 2011, Chris Brown used it on the BET Awards. And it came to light. People were amazed at it. So we knew we had something. And then from there, it just kind of kept growing. Death Cab for Cutie used it in their music video. Black Eyed Peas used it on some of their television appearances. And we put it on America's Got Talent, and it was a huge hit. Millions of views before trending was even a thing. Best act tonight, best act of the live shows, best new act in America. Amazing things were happening right and left. Something that meant so much to me was I was mentoring young girls in the coding world through a partnership with Google. We started to hire more people. We became a bigger family. We were at the height of Illuminate. But... I wasn't feeling quite right. Old scars from my past surgeries from my past cancer were flaring up. I had several bone marrow biopsies. It was confirmed that I had cancer, acute myeloid leukemia. And this is a secondary cancer that is very hard to cure. We were told that most often it ends in death. I can't explain it except to say, you don't even realize how fragile you are as a human until you experience something like this. You don't even realize the strength that takes to just take a step, the strength that takes to open your eyes, or even the strength that takes to understand a simple question like, would you like something to drink? I think the fourth round of chemo in, it was hard to be strong. It was hard. My skin was burning from the inside out and I hadn't eaten for weeks. It was just, there was, there was nowhere to turn or relief from the pain. It was just constant, it was constant. And I couldn't see a way out. And unfortunately, it's hard to say this, but there were times when I was ready to go. I felt like, you know, maybe I won't wake up tomorrow. And that's okay. Because the pain was so intense. And the finish line seemed so far away. But I just didn't know if I'd make it. Hi, Merle. Happy holidays. Listen, I want to thank you for being a blessing in my life. We love you. We send you love and light. All for you. 
Hey, bro, what's up? We out here in Saudi. Uh, we wish that you could be with us. Sending you all my love and light, and I hope to see you soon. Yo, bro, love you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Miss you so much. And send you all the love and good vibes from me and all of these amazing people. I took my mom four days before she could get me to open my eyes and see these beautiful messages of love. It was a turning point for me. I realized it wasn't up to me to surrender to this disease. Nobody else was giving up. Not the doctors, nurses, researchers, my parents, my fiance, sister, friends, family. Nobody else was giving up. They were there to make sure I knew they were rooting for me. I allowed myself to welcome their love, and their strength was what lifted me up. I remember I wasn't alone in this. It takes a village to survive. You know, I started Illuminate 10 years ago because I wanted people to see the true essence of a performer to allow their true essence to shine through the lights. Never in a million years did I think that this would be a part of my story in such a beautiful way. Please, if you know someone who's going through something, share your light, share your love with them. It could just save a life. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is just amazing, um, very moving and just, I'm sorry, I'm in tears. It is just amazing. I'm gonna let you take it uh, from you. Thank you, um, yes, it was, it's, it's art and, and people that really saved me. And I think um, that's why I am so uh, drawn to your cause is that when you're, when you're sick and feeling hopeless or helpless, sometimes the things that really get you to, to find purpose is, is creating, is feeling like there's that, that you're not, you're not susceptible to something that you actually have some sort of control in what you're going through. And I mean, just starting from the beginning of uh, just my personality has always been that art helped protect me from a lot of difficulties in life, whether it was, you know, feeling different or unaccepted or afraid or um, all of the many emotions that we have every day as people. And I found that art was a way for me to connect when I didn't find it easy to connect with people in the common ways. A bit, I was always a bit shy, not, not much of a, I wasn't very verbal. I wasn't, I, I wasn't a very outgoing person, but I was very creative and I didn't even know, realize how much that creativity helped influence my life and help and get me through very difficult times. And once I found that um, I actually had two experiences with cancer and the first one I started my um, I started dancing actually when I was five um, from Egypt and it's a big part of our culture in in Egypt dance is 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 just a way to commune with people and celebrate life and that 
that emotional connection and happiness really came um, so naturally to me when I would watch um, people around me dance and you just put music on and you know, no one, it wasn't about how you looked or if you were good or not, it was how you felt and how much you gave to each other and how much you inspired each other. And so I took that, that with me as I started to do more dancing and like ballet and jazz and more of the, you know, I guess you could say Western styles. Um, but I also had a very inquisitive mind. And so when I discovered writing software at the age of nine, it was another way to be creative for me. Because even as a dancer, or I would always make these little dances for my parents and my sisters and say, oh, I made a new routine or I'm telling you a new story because I wanted to share my art. And that was, it helped give me purpose and also helped me feel like I had um, a way to express what I was feeling with, you know, when words didn't really do. Um, and then when I discovered the computer, it was another way to share through, through creativity because I would write these games and then just put them out there for whoever wanted to play them. And another way to just say, look, I'm doing something cool. Let's all, let's collaborate. And it, again, it gives me purpose um, when, when life was difficult. And I always dreamed that I would, in, in my head, become a professional dancer and then do computer science on the side or vice versa. And I ended up moving to New York City and I uh, went to Columbia University to study computer science while dancing in, in New York and um, choreographing uh, through student organizations and taking classes at the Sister School of Barnard and even doing a work study, a work, um, I guess, an international work uh, study program in London where I continued to study uh, dance and even music at the time. So when I graduated, I was planning to pursue dance while still writing code. And I got a very uh, good job at Bloomberg Financial writing software and uh, dancing as well. And about a year in, I wanted to shift and only focus on dance. So I decided to go see some doctors while I still had health insurance. And it was when I went and saw a doctor that I found that I had cancer. Um, I had a tumor in my right hip, sarcoma, and it was a surrounding an artery that, that uh, gave blood to my legs and supplied, you know, blood to the different um, parts of my lower hip. And it was also wrapped around my psoas muscle. And I was quite fortunate because the doctor and the, the surgeon I had understood the importance of dance for me. And he spent, I think, seven hours in surgery making sure that he got as much of the tumor as he could while keeping my leg intact. Um, and I was, I was okay. But then when they took the, when they sent the tumor to a pathology lab, they found out it was a high grade sarcoma. And at the time I was only 21. And when you're younger with cancer, they try, they tend to be more aggressive. So they did something that was quite new called interoperative radiation in which they pointed a, um, a beam at, uh, they reopened me up and they pointed and they moved all my organs to the side, um, but they couldn't move muscle because muscle doesn't move. So they then pointed a beam in my right hip area to radiate like with some really strong radiation so that they could get as many of any of the lingering cells that they could um, before the cancer metastasized, which was common with the kind of sarcoma I had if you didn't treat it aggressively. Um, unfortunately, that radiation caused a lot of different side effects for me, um, one of which was I couldn't really walk for a while, let alone dance. And through physical therapy, I learned to just move my body slowly and through yoga um, and Pilates and the such to really find, find movement in a safe place. And I continued to, um, write, to work for Bloomberg. I was quite fortunate that I still had the job. And one of the things that really helped me was purpose again, um, having purpose. When I was working, when I was in the hospital and when I was getting my treatments, I started, I was given a pretty important project at Bloomberg and they really put a lot of trust in me. And I started to go back to work and while I was doing the radiation treatments because that was, that was my creative space. I couldn't dance anymore. More. But for me, writing code is incredibly creative. So I was able to keep creating art and the medium was just different. And I think that's a, such an important thing for um, people to understand that, that, you know, art comes in so many 
different forms. And for me, the computer became my, 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 I guess you could say my pal, my, my paintbrush, my, um, the place where I created. Uh, and I, I, um, yeah, I, I went from, I guess you could say steam to stem, stem to steam. I see someone else saying, so I, I, uh, I guess I started to really exist in that world while also producing shows around New York where I would dance some and have other people perform um, through a company just, just to keep being creative, not because we were trying to become popular or famous, but just because we as artists just wanted to keep having purpose and creativity and a way to, um, I guess, to, I guess, uh, relate and um, this and speak through art and collaboration and co-inspiration. So for us, going to a bar wasn't as fun as going to a dance studio and seeing what we can do. And in the dance studio, we would talk about all sorts of things and then we'd dance a little bit and then we'd start creating again. And then we would create, uh, have these shows where if, even if it was just friends and families who came, family who came, it was still such a state, safe space to stay engaged, inspired, creative um, while I was still at Bloomberg. So art and art really saved me when it seemed like my dreams were crushed when I couldn't dance anymore. And after a few years at Bloomberg, I just I wanted to continue to um, explore art and have a little bit more freedom. So this was about the time when the iPhone came out. So I decided to leave my leave my cushy job at Bloomberg and travel while writing apps. And that was quite interesting because it gave me a chance to see the world while still working. And to really start to realize how much um, art is everywhere, everywhere and everything that you do and so healing in so many ways. So it, it was happenstance that I ended up at a conference with in the back of my mind, a friend pushing me to explore art through computers that I found a way to do something that combined my two passions, dance and technology through um, the new wireless world because iPhones now had wireless chips and wireless was everywhere. And I thought, what if you can do things wirelessly with dancers on stage? And that soon became I Illuminate. And it was such an incredible journey from, you know, and difficult, but from the beginning, just the inspiration of just constantly creating, it was a, an obsession. It was everything, but it was also a way that I bonded with people because we just, found a common language in art, whether you were the engineer who was building the hardware, the software developer who was helping figure out what the system was going to be, you know, myself with the apps and how do I program the lights and bringing dancers in and putting circuit boards on them and hoping they won't uh, get hurt. Um, it was it was just really exciting. And it just, it, it was never about where it was going. It was always about what, what, how much fun was it to create it? It was about the journey. It was about the process um, to the point where I didn't even notice when it, it, was, it almost took off. And I was still kind of that girl in a Brooklyn apartment just playing around and doing these fun shows just for fun. For, it, was, it, was, it was just always about the art and about the community and about expressing ourselves through the common love of creativity. And I think what really came out of that was uh, a connection that you don't get unless you really uh, make yourself, allow yourself to be vulnerable. And I think as artists, we open ourselves up a lot. And in that vulnerability, we actually, actually let a lot of people into our lives and into our hearts in a way that sometimes doesn't happen when you're just hanging out or going to the movies or going to dinner, because when you start to really allow yourself to be expressive and express what's deepest in your heart or deepest in your in your mind, you you open yourself up to a different side of others as well. And that creativity really pushed I Illuminate to become a family in addition to being a technology company and a performance company. And I think it also opened me up as an art as a person because I used, I tend to be very closed off emotionally. And that's also what helped me get through cancer the second time because at the height of illuminate we had shows everywhere it was you know we were touring we had um cruise ship shows we were in theme parks we were doing private events 
I was speaking, as I said, doing education programs. We were partnering with the U.S. Embassy um, to teach uh, dance and, and technology around the world from Central Asia to Saudi Arabia to um, New Zealand or Samoa, as well as right uh, here in America. And so um, I also got the opportunity to start mentoring young girls who, who were just like me, a bit different and very inquisitive and felt like they couldn't find they couldn't find acceptance in what they love to do because of the stereotypes that came with being what I would call a computer artist, a software developer, a coder. Um, so we, you know, and we were you know doing a lot of things, but I wasn't quite right. I wasn't feeling right, and I went to a doctor, um, and it was discovered that um, I had acute myeloid leukemia. And this was actually caused by the radiation I received for my first cancer because they were so aggressive and it wasn't until later that they found out that that aggressiveness actually can have uh, side effects later because it can cause chromosomal mut mutations in your bone marrow, which is basically what happened to me. And so um, I had a second diagnosis with cancer, but this one was, was a lot more um, serious because it was in the bone marrow and a chromosomal shift, which meant that the only survival I had was a stem cell transplant because I had to obliterate all of the bone marrow, um, all of the stem cells in my bone marrow and get um, donor cells so that those chromosomal mutations would be um, gone. And I was very fortunate because my sister was a 100% match. And I was also very fortunate because I had an incredible support system. My fiance was there from the second I got diagnosed until, until I was dancing on stage again. Um, and my mother and father were there to, to get to take care of me in every way I needed. And you know, the mo a mother's love is irreplaceable. And I was so lucky to have that support that got me through some of the darkest days. Um, and I wouldn't be here without them. Um, and then I got another support that, that I didn't expect, but I guess in retrospect, I, I understand now, which was from the company I created and the people behind it, because I, I realized by being an artist and a CEO, I allowed myself to be vulnerable through art. And that vulnerability opened me up to being more empathetic towards those around me and, um, them being empathetic towards me as well and us speaking a language of co-inspiration where we all came from different backgrounds, whether you're performing on stage or you're designing a costume or you're soldering the lights or writing the code, all we all had a common vision and a common goal, which was to create something beautiful, creative, um, and uh, that could bring smiles to people's faces with these lights to give bring love and light to the world. And, and, and having that vision really also made us become more uh, close as people. And so when I was sick and I started getting these outpours of videos and emails and texts and cards and gifts, it, it just, it made me, it was so touching because it, it just, it, I, I didn't have to always be the leader. I, I allowed myself to be taken care of too. And I think in art, you allow yourself to, you don't always have to be right or in charge or the, the, the final word on something. It, you, you find a world where, in a, I guess, hearing different voices, different points of view, different stories and backgrounds creates a, a, um, a more humble experience and hence makes other people realize that they are important too, that I can't do it alone. No one can do anything alone. So, so I, I was, you know, CEO in, in title, but I was in a hospital bed and, and this company just took over. They did, it, they didn't skip a beat and they wanted to make sure that I was, it was okay for me to take a pause and okay for me to breathe a little bit and that they were there for me and they would be there for me, um, no matter what. And that comes through the artistic space that builds empathy, kindness, collaboration, co-inspiration, acceptance, inclusion. And so um, I think the more we can teach it to kids, 
at a young age and the more we can bring it to those who aren't well and who those who are suffering through some very unimaginable things and diseases, the easier it'll be for to, to just let them know that it's okay to be vulnerable and to be scared and to be all of those feelings because you're not alone and to also give purpose because through art, again, I felt this need to get back into it because I want, I had something to say again. And I wanted to, when I was better, kind of get this message across and purpose is another big driver for getting better is, and you can, and what is amazing about an artist is you can have purpose every single day of your life um, without having to rely on it for, um, I guess, money and, and bills. So, you know, I, behind me, I have a piano and I'm not a pianist, but every morning I wake up and I play piano. And that's just because it's an artistic way for me to just get excited about something through this very difficult, um, this very difficult quarantine that we're all experiencing because you can't control a lot in life right now, but it's the little things that you can do such as painting or learning music or learning how to dance or, or learning how to code or um, mathematics. So I think art and creativity and purpose is so important um and so even going forward with illuminate we're we're looking to start a new tv series where we uh, i call them up it's of the 21st century where these light suit characters have a personality and through art and dance and tell and um and animation we we teach these these things that are getting kind of ignored i think sometimes in um education about the importance of celebrating our differences, learning how to see the world from each other's perspective, appreciating what makes us quirky and that some some that the good and the bad, you take both and sometimes that becomes the great. Um, so we're really focused on giving back right now as a company through education. Um, we're working with the US NBC now to create a new program um, uh, where kids from around the world are allowed to experience the Illuminate system virtually and, and program their own light suits, um, as, as well as the, YouTube, the, the television series. And we, we visit hospitals. We, um, we just try, we're trying to really get that message out of love and light. Um, and even our Vegas show, which was going to open, and then a week before opening, COVID hit. It's on pause, but when it opens in uh, 2021 at some point, um, it's going to be a safe space. It's called happy hour. And I actually wanted it when I was creating the show, it came from being in a hospital for almost a year and realizing how important it is to just find a safe space to be happy and to, com and to, and to be around people and experience our connections. So when it's safe for us to open this, this message is even more important is, is, is take an hour out of your, out of your day and find happiness and connectivity with people around you and be entertained. And so um, that hopefully we'll be able to share that next year. Um, but that's a bit of my background and how art has really saved my life literally. And I hope that we can help through organizations like kids in art to continue to show that the importance of art when right now we we're struggling to find our voice as artists um, and our and and to to really show the legitimacy of artistic creativity um, so I guess that's what I have to say and I would love to hear from everyone if you have questions I'd I'd love to know more about who's who's listening and anything that you'd like like to know about myself, the company, or just anything you want to say. Oh, I can't hear you. Sorry, I was mute. Uh, everyone, if you can please put your questions in the chat. I do have two people from a young board. Uh, who are uh, watching and listening, and I would love to bring them in. So a young board is very new. Um, you have to either be a cancer patient, survivor, or a sibling of a, uh, you know, bereaved sibling. And so our first um, attendee that I'm going to bring on, her name is Cheyenne, and uh, Cheyenne's sister passed away in 2011, uh, but Cheyenne herself has gone through you know, the cancer journey. And I am going to let her come on and ask you uh, the 
couple of questions that she already has for you. And in the meantime, please, everyone, start typing your questions. I know you all are in awe and um, frozen and cannot write anything, but do it now. Cheyenne, are you able to join? Yep, there she is. She'll be up in a second. While she's coming on, there's usually a lag. Um, OK, we have a question. You said that in art, you don't always have to be right. I think this is so true. Any suggestions on getting that message across to children? Oh, um, that is a very good question. Um, and a very good, um, yeah, it's a good question. I, it, it comes from my um, acceptance, learning acceptance and finding magic in even the most what would be considered mundane things. I think by teaching that there's not a right or wrong and that you can find beauty in, in basically almost anything. You really, and teaching that as long as it's authentic, it's beautiful, is is important. Because sometimes we feel like we need to copy or something is, it looks so good that why can't I do it? Um, and that, that, that race to be like someone else or to do something else can get in the way of your voice and what is it that you wanna do? Even if it may not be, you know, right in the, in terms, I think, if it's if it, if you're true to yourself, then it's easier to to I guess tune out all of the noise. And then also I guess teaching it comes down to also the anti-bullying and, and also teaching kids how to accept because a lot of that right and wrong comes from the fear of being wrong and being made fun of. So if we kind of are able to focus on the uh, yeah, just how do you just teach acceptance so that you're not afraid to be different, which doesn't mean wrong, just means being yourself. Like it's okay to be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And looks like we have Cheyenne with us. Uh, I'm going to see if I can make the screen such that the two of you are next to each other, but I think I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try this. If it doesn't work, I'm going to get you back on. And Cheyenne, please go ahead. I think I'm doing something wrong. You're okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Hi, Muriel. My name is Cheyenne. Um, as poor V mentioned, my sister Ira was diagnosed with cancer when she was five. Um, I think what a lot of people don't know is I was also diagnosed around 22. Um, so your story is very, very, I guess, similar to mine right out of college and um, you know, it gets you right when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the questions I had for you is actually about your um, global outreach that you've done with Illuminate. And then I was also very curious about your work with Google and the Made to Code program. So um, do you mind talking about that a little bit more? Sure. Um, so in, with Google, we, we were, I was asked to be a mentor for young girls who wanted to get into coding. So I was uh, one of the first men, uh, mentors for this program called Made with Code, where they brought people together to show how you can code in, in, in some of the most exciting ways. And I also did some videos for code.org, where we, we also showed some pretty um, fun videos that taught some uh, of the foundational um, aspects of computer science. And then internationally, I have a dear friend who works at the U.S. Embassy. We went to high school together. And she uh, wanted to bring Illuminate to Central Asia to do an education tour. And it was incredible because we went to places where, you know, you would think they don't have much, but they had everything because they had so much love and support in, in, in what they do every day and, and really took time to teach art. And so it was it was. breath of fresh air to just see that art is is being taught and that you know it's a, it, it's possible so um and then we went the uh, the group also went to Samoa where you know they didn't have electricity but yet they had the biggest smiles on their faces all the time and they really appreciate and they would sing and dance for for um us as, as opposed to us coming in to, to dance for them so I think that in, and even going to Saudi Arabia and performing 
when and allowing women and children to and men to actually sit together, which was very rare in Saudi, and women to perform on stage because it was safe behind the light suits. We were even given an opportunity to to culturally um, change the landscape. Um, so, yes, through we've had some really uh, great opportunities. Yeah, sounds like it's a once in a lifetime, especially with Saudi Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then my second question, I guess, was, you know, I, I can kind of relate to this as well, but I guess both of your diagnoses, I can imagine, you know, the first one, it's like you're at the start of your career, so to speak, and you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. And so I, I can see how that was almost like serving serving you to um, kind of kind of give you the direction that you wanted to take for the later part of your life. Um, I guess with the second one, given that it was, you know, at the peak of Illuminate, um, I guess to me that would be the more derailing of the two. I guess how were you able to cope? I know you talked a lot about your support system, and um, I'm just I'm curious as to how you were able to you know stay in touch with art and use that to help you throughout, you know, some of those darkest days. Good question. And um, we actually, you're quite smart because it was the second one that struck harder um, because I felt like Illuminate hadn't really hit its peak yet. We were kind of in an incubator, um, but there were other people doing, trying to emulate what we were doing. Mm-hmm. And I had this honest fear, like, um, I guess what I've worked for I'll be forgotten. And, and, I, and, you know, that's a very honest thought and a very, you know, you try to take your ego away, but then when you realize that you may not have a lot of time left on the earth, it's really, did you do enough? Did you, did you live to your full potential? And um, I think what I realized was by growing the company slowly, and really making it about the people behind the company and not as much about the product. I knew in my heart that that life isn't about one person or one thing. It, it, it's about how much we're connected and that, you know, my legacy would live on through through the mission statement of I Illuminate and it would be okay if I didn't make it. And it would be and it would be okay if I did too. And it'd be great, but I wasn't I wasn't going to allow myself to um, let my ego and get in the way because I was surrounded by so much love from my family and fiance and the, the, everyone around me that I just, I just felt silly for even thinking that, but it actually took a minute for me to, to just let, let my ego go. But, you know, as artists, we sometimes we find, find that way. Um, and so that's what I mean when I say you don't have to be the best. You just have to really just stay committed to what you're doing. Wow. Well, oh, thank you. I appreciate your vulnerability. Um, and that was everything I had. Um, thank you, Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we already have the second uh, guest waiting to talk to you. Hi. So this is Arjun uh, from a young board, and Arjun is my son, uh, and he is a sibling. He's the sibling of, you know, he's also lost his brother. So, and uh, Cheyenne and Arjun have something in common. They both lost their siblings on exactly the same day, September 25, 2011. Wow. So, so yes, they are connected in many ways that they don't know. So, so, so I have one kind of like larger question, and it's, a, I guess it's like a multi step question i don't know <laughs> um but basically so you were diagnosed with cancer later in your life than most individuals who participate in kids and art um when you are when you are older you already have some understanding of your interests and potentially you know what you want to pursue in your career just that comes with age um if there were three things that you could share with the kids and teens at kids and art who are still developing their interests and hobbies what would they be don't let other people influence you really be guided by what you love to do. Um, that would be one, which is very difficult. Um, uh, and 
It's a very hard question. Um, yeah, it is. You can't, yeah. <laughs> and I and I guess while you're thinking, like, and part of the reason why I, I asked the question too is right when when Ame passed away, I was 12, right? So I obviously didn't know what I wanted to do. That's the age when you're still discovering, you're still thinking about, you know, you're just playing around with things, right? You play like three sports in, in one year. Um, and now that I'm older and I can look back on it, that's kind of why I'm, I'm asking this question because a lot of the people who are, who do participate in kids and are, are younger, right? And, and are, you know, 12, younger than that, some are older. Um, but yeah, and I, your story is super inspiring. So, so yeah, that is, that is why I'm asking it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and well, I mean, you can't imagine what you've gone through in your family and what your mom is doing for, for kids is, is so commendable. Um, I mean, I think finding friendships, sincere friendships, which is also a bit hard to figure out as a kid, but really knowing who, who loves you for you are the people you want to be surrounded by. Because a lot of times when you're young, you want to be cool or you want to be accepted, but it's so much more important to, to be loved. And I think that's yeah. something that is hard to understand at that age. But if sometimes also being diagnosed with something like cancer, matures you very quickly yeah. and you start yeah. as a even as a child to, to recognize authenticity um mm -hmm. and then just you know just one day at a time to be honest you know some days are going to be harder than others and and it it's okay to have it's okay to, to have some bad days and um yeah, and, and to really appreciate those around you because the caregivers, the parents, the loved ones, they're going through it too. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes as a patient, you don't even notice because you're in so much pain. But I think when I started to notice what was around me, it actually helped with my pain because I, like I said, I realized I wasn't in it alone. We were all yeah. in it together. And I think that's appreciating the many people who are there for you, who's cheering you on, even when you can't see them because you're so blinded by the pain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. Um, so I have one more question. And mm -hmm. this is, I guess, a little bit of a lighter question. Um, did you ever play around with the idea of combining dance and technology previous to find, founding Illuminate? And off of that, um, was it while you were in treatment that you started to approach your hobbies with an entrepreneurial mindset? Um, the first question, I think the closest I got was I was in college and I don't know if you guys in that world know what an if then else statement is, but I tried yeah, to yeah. Dance piece about if then else. And I tried to okay. explain it to the dancers, like the rules. And so it was supposed to be improvisation based where what, what one person does affects how you perform. Mm. Uh, and it was really difficult, but also really fun because they it started to open up their minds of like thinking, not, you know, not always learning, but actually like thinking through choreography. Um, so that was kind of the first time um, I guess I combined them. But, mm -hmm. but otherwise it was really like for me, dance was, they were separate worlds. That's a whole other thing, but because also there's almost like there had to be two versions of me because in the mm -hmm. tech world being, and a woman in a tech world, you, I had to play a different role than a woman in the dance world. And so I, that was also a survival mechanism was to keep both worlds separate. Um, and then I guess, uh, I don't, I, I think I was always kind of entrepreneurial since I was a kid. My mom and dad would know better, but I think I was always <laughs> just trying to, I was always trying to create things. And so even mm -hmm. now, I don't even think of myself as a CEO. I really think of myself as an artist who who has the skills like I guess the more um, day to day skills having gone to I was really lucky to go to Columbia and, and, and do um, the core curriculum, which really pushed me to understand writing and, and different like business management type things. So I was able to thrive through it um, and and create a company. But I don't but it was never my dream to start a company. It was always my dream to be creative. Um, nice. and, and yeah. I, that's um, that's also entrepreneurial now. Yeah, I, I really like the way you just said that, actually. I've never thought about it that way. Um, thank you. Those were my two questions. Um, you, Arjun. But I really appreciate your time. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. So more questions from the audience. Anybody wants to uh, chime in uh, while they are all 
thinking or being shy as i said everyone's in awe so i'm sure they're all going to have all these questions like oh why didn't we ask her this i just want to say that you know everything you said just resonated with you know what we go through with kids and art you know what you said about creativity is such an important part of just knowing who you are or saying it's okay that i'm not feeling well or being vulnerable or asking for help um i think that's just such uh, nothing else ever lets you do that and that's what i think the kids get out of just you know hiding if they want to use that word putting the blinders and just painting or just drawing and letting everything else that's happening that's not in their control just happen because they can't control the cancer and they can't control the you know treatment but this little piece of paper or whatever they are doing is in their control right so i really love that you said that because that's something we always keep saying um you know just to whoever asks like why it means um i still get asked this question i'm sure and you brought it up too it's like art is nice to have not a must have what do you have to say for that i mean it's i think where we we take art for granted as a society and so um exactly what you're saying are uh I, how do we get people who who haven't discovered their inner artist let's because i think we all have it but who haven't discovered their inner artist appreciate how important it is and that without art they would have nothing to look forward to at the end of the work day because it's it's right now even we're consuming art constantly through this quarantine mm -hmm. and a lot of people are discovering new art forms um even cooking is an art form when you're making, you know, people are finding new recipes and I, and all of that is, it's just finding your, what makes you unique. And I think we all strive for, for our voices to be heard. And so art gives everybody a chance to do that. And by having money behind it, it also gives people the opportunity to see the potential of art and something to, um, to hope to uh, achieve and accomplish because they see what's possible. So I, I think it's just so healing, to, especially through these times. And you see when cultures appreciate art, that they, they tend to be stronger as a union, as a, as a whole. They thrive. I'm glad you said, uh, I know we have to end. You said if you put money behind it, as nonprofits, we always find it very hard to put money behind something that people think it's nice to have, not a must have. Um, so that's the reason why I asked that question, because of course I'm preaching to the choir. This audience knows what you know art has done for them, but it's just a long, longer and larger conversation to have with people. So. Um, I do want to take this opportunity to thank you. Uh, really, this has been an amazing session, and uh, we could keep talking and we could keep hearing about you know all your ideas and where you're going to go from here. But I know the next session starts at four, and I just want to let everyone know who are new to uh, Crowdcast. If you just uh, click up here, it'll show you the upcoming sessions. You just scroll, and then um, then we just call you into the next session. It's really uh, that's simple if I can figure it out. Yes, I did. Um, and uh, Meryl, thank you very much. I hope we can keep this conversation going. I hope we can do a workshop with our kids. The virtual lights that you talked about, I would love to make that happen somehow. So. That would be so great. Thank you. Thank you, thank so you much. very much. Thank you. And um, everyone, uh, please stay here. Uh, Jade, can you call everyone to session or am i supposed to um but Meryl, are you joining us for the next session i don't know my computer is about to die i'm noticing okay, okay. i'm watching the sessions um on my computer is that what joining means <laughs> yeah, yeah you just stay here we just say call to session so i'm going to have to uh close your video so that i can bring the other presenter okay. in so uh thank you very much once again thank you Hello, my name is Caroline Robbins and I'm Programme Manager with Kids and Art Foundation. I hope you enjoyed the four day summit and all the sessions that were available and are still available. I also hope that you might consider donating to Kids and Art and supporting our weekly virtual art workshops for paediatric cancer families. Thank you so much.